This is battery. I'm going to show you how to do some basic shading in Photoshop. Well, this is just a mouse. I actually use a graphics tablet for all my shading and stuff like that, and coloring. But before I had one, that all I had was a mouse, and that's all I had to use. So I'm going to show you guys how to use how to do it, like I used to. Okay, let's see here. I got my line layer here. Got Arby. Okay. Let's make a new layer here. Shift Control N makes a new layer. Call rename this sh shade. Um, get one for. Let's do one for color. Put this one underneath. See the shade layer on top of the line layer, and the color layer underneath the line layer. Or did I say both? I, I don't know, whatever. Um, let's see here. Lock the line layer. Let's see here, use the magic wand tool. You can select areas. See, look at that. Zoom in here. See, you can just take a color. Um, don't have any color references or whatever, but. Oops. No. Wrong layer selected. Oh. Unlock that. Okay, line layer. You can set that up to multiply. There we go. And your shade layer, you also want to set to multiply. See so here, lock that layer back up. Okay, we got that. Okay, let's just do the arm real quick. We'll just shade the arm. I'll show you how to do that. Let's see here. Put your bond tools. Go that, 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 that. Let's do that too. Okay. Let's see here, probably won't be the same color as I had it in the finished picture. So here, go back to color, bucket, and dump it on there. Look at that. Okay, control D, deselects it. Okay, there we go. Got our color. Okay, say this is all colored, I want to shade now. Usually, when I shade, I turn off my color so it doesn't throw me off. I go with my shade here. Take my magic wand, select the outside of the Character. Oh wait. Okay, never mind. Go back to your, my line layer. Select outside. All the outside areas here. Shift, Control, I will inverse your selection to the character. Which here we have Arby. Got your shading. Depending on the color scheme you're going for or whatever, like whatever color you want to pick for shading, you can pretty much use any color for shading usually depends on what your color scheme is like on the finished picture of this I used uh, I think a I used like a grayish blue color like a really gray blue now to do it like in some of my comic book pages like if you've seen it like when a couple of my characters are in the pit fighting I use like a gnarly looking green color Here I'm just gonna uh, let's see here. See this nice little light, light blue color. There we go. Let's use that right there. That's gonna be our base shade. See here, bucket tool. So let's dump it onto the character. There we go. And then go back. Let's make it darker here. About right there. Okay, now we go to our brush tool. Should be for brush. Okay, here's what makes it shadow, like how I do it by shading and things. Right here we have opacity. Right now it's at 18. I'm gonna, I'll just keep it at 18. Flow. 
Uh, let's just keep flow where it is too. Okay, for shading. Start pretty much anywhere you want. Just click. Drag it, stuff like that. It's starting to get darker, you just go back over it again. Just keep on going click and go over. That's why I like to use a, my, my tablet because it goes a lot faster. And it's a lot more comfortable to hold so you don't get carpal tunnel from holding a mouse. Death grip on it. I don't know if you can tell, but it's getting darker. Let's see here, it's getting really dark in the armpit. Oh, my computer's starting to freak out. That's uh, not dark enough. I need. See a little darker. There we go. Usually a nice shade will get it all nice looking. Let's see here, let's get the inside of his arm. If I'm do smaller, you always have to go back here. Set the brush down. Make sure your brush is hard. I forgot to mention that earlier. Don't make sh make sure no. Don't make sure it's hard. Make sure it's super soft. Turn it the hardness all the way down to zero percent. And diameter, it's the size, or whatever. You can use it to adjust it how you need it. Usually, when I I'm using my tablet, I just set it up really big. I just lightly press to make it small, stuff like that. That's why I like using the tablet, of course, the pressure sensitivity. Let's see here. Shading, shading. Ah, oh, computer. I don't like you. Okay. Get a pocket. Let's do some underneath this arm a little bit too. Ah, computer's running slow. That's what you get for using a 10 year old computer. Okay. Okay, skip that. Okay, um, now we got our shade in. Now it's time to put some highlights and go back. Just use a light color of your, of your base color that you used. Here, right there. Maybe a little lighter. There, almost white. There you go. You just, you just pretty much do it just like the shade. You just go back over and over and over again. So you get light enough to how you want it. Okay, there you go, I'll say that's good enough for now. I usually spend a lot of time doing the shading, which makes it look nice. Okay, now time for the reveal. Just unhide that layer, see what it looks like. Look at that. Looks kind of green right now, but whatever. Turn it off and see the difference in it. If 
you really want to get some nice highlights in, you can always add another layer. I usually use... Okay, right here, overlay. I usually use overlay for making stuff shiny. Or sometimes whenever I need to make highlights even lighter. But overlay, you just set it up like here. I'm going to set this even higher. Even brighter. Color, almost white now. Let's go back over my highlights. Set the opacity down a little bit more. Maybe the flow too. There we go, we got some shading done here, but that's pretty much how I do it. But I hope that helps you guys do your own artwork later. It also works in GIMP also, just saying. You just set the opacity low and just keep on going over and over and over again. Make sure you use a softer brush. I don't think GIMP GIMP has a hardness level in it, unless you make your own custom brush then you can adjust the hardness on it once and then after that you have to keep it. And it doesn't. And GIMP also doesn't have a flow either, which kind of bugged me when I was using it because I was used to using Photoshop at first at school when I was doing it. So, Well I hope this helps you make your own art and everything, so yep. Bye.